So you're playing through a new tune, and it's all feeling pretty easy so far. Then you come across a chord that you've never seen before. You have no idea what scale it takes, so you frantically play it off by just arpeggiating the chord tones. You just barely survived, but in your heart, you know you wish you could have done more. Well, the good news is that every single scale for every single chord can be found in Chad Lefkowitz Brown's Scales for Jazz Improvisation, which we'll be exploring in today's video. And we'll be going over five exercises that you can do for every single scale that you're working on. Just like a checklist, if you can work all five of these exercises up to fluency and memory, it will be guaranteed that you have truly learned the sound of this scale. So let's get into the first example. You're playing a tune for the first time and you see a D flat seven sharp 11. What the heck are we supposed to play on that? Well, Scales for Jazz Improvisation has it laid out clearly here. Looks like we're playing the D flat Lydian dominant scale, which is just a mixolydian scale with a raised fourth. Before we try any exercise, we should first always make sure that we can play the entire scale in the full range of our instrument. <laughs> Awesome. So the first exercise we'll do is exercise number four from the book. As you see here, we're going to start on the root, walk up till we reach the fifth, go back down two notes, and then skip a note, landing us back on the root before the measure is over. These last two notes end up being a diatonic enclosure around the target note, which is the first note of the next measure. So we ended up landing on the second degree of the scale, and from here on, we're going to do that exact same scalar shape again and again. When we descend, we're gonna do almost the exact same thing, except rather than walking up to the fifth note, we're gonna walk up to the fourth note, then go back down. As you see, this keeps the line descending. So let's finally play this exercise and hear what it sounds like. Amazing. If you can work at this till it's fully in your memory and at a speed that you're proud of, you have ticked the first box of the checklist. Let's move on to the second example. Let's say you come across a B13 flat 9 sus4. What on earth do we possibly- Oh! It's laid out beautifully right here. The scale we use is the B Dorian flat 2. This is just the Dorian mode with a lowered second. You could also think of this as the second mode of A melodic minor. Here's what this scale sounds like. So the second exercise I present to you is exercise number three from the book. It is very similar, but this time we'll be starting on the third note of the scale. This is a good way to branch away from needing to depend on playing the root first before you can recall the scale. So we start on the third note, go down three notes, go up three notes, then skip a note upwards. Again, these last two notes give us a diatonic enclosure, but this time the other way around, where we play a note below, then above the target E. From here, the pattern repeats till we ascend through the entire scale. Then when we descend, everything again is almost exactly the same, but this time, rather than going back down the scale a note earlier, now we're going to modify the diatonic enclosure at the end. We'll play a note above, then below, making the target the next scale degree down, C. From here, the pattern repeats itself. Let's finally hear what all this sounds like. <laughs> Incredible. So after this one is fully memorized, you should have a really strong sense of playing this scale in a scalar fashion. So next we need to work on a wider interval. Okay, so say you come across a F sharp seven, sharp nine, flat 13. Oh, for the love of, oh, page seven is here to the rescue. This takes an F sharp altered scale, which is just the seventh mode of G melodic minor. <laughs> Thank you. 
This brings us to the third exercise, playing the scale in thirds. There's multiple ways to play thirds within a scale, but I'll show you one way that will never let you down. So ascending, we'll start on the root on the downbeat. Skip a note and play the next. Then we'll start on the second degree of the scale on the next downbeat and do the same pattern all throughout the scale. After we get to the top, we'll play the root again, but this time we'll skip a note down. Now our upper notes are on the downbeats and we end up with this cool stair-steppy zigzaggy motion. This sounds like this. And of course, as with every exercise, bonus points if you can do it in the full range of your instrument. Excellent. All right, now that you have some intervals in your hands and ears, it's time to get some harmonies in your hands and ears also. All right, so let's say your dad asked you to play a B flat seven, flat 13. Oh, what scale has the, oh, page 11 has the cure. This chord will take a B flat mixolydian scale with a lowered sixth. <laughs> So the fourth exercise is to play the scale's diatonic seventh chords. Diatonic means within the scale, and seventh chords are four note chords. So in summary, these are all of the four note chords that exist within the scale. You can find each one by going on each scale degree and stacking diatonic thirds on each pitch till you have a four note chord for each scale degree. There are a variety of ways to play these chords in succession, but I'll show you my favorite way that sounds nice and flows in the hands quite nicely too. Here it is. We're going to go upwards for the first chord and then down for the next. This up-down pattern will repeat itself. When we arrive back to the one chord up an octave, you'll notice because the scale has an uneven number of notes, we end up playing this one chord downwards. So to knock two birds with one stone, when we descend back down, we'll start this one chord at the top going upwards and then down, up, down, etc. Now you can see that all of our chords directions are reversed. So you really get the all encompassing experience. So let's hear how all this sounds. <laughs> Superb! This exercise really is a lot of good information to really soak into your ears and muscle memory. And will make improvising within whichever scale you're working on so much easier. The final example I'll show you will really present an opportunity to work your ears, mind, and technique within the scale that you're working on. So say a song has a F major 7 sharp 11, and you're thinking, oh wow, I should really know this, oh. Page five has the solution. This will take the F Lydian mode, which is just an F major scale with a raised fourth. So the fifth and final exercise is to play the scale in diatonic open triads. An open triad is a triad that spans more than an octave. How we'll do this is by turning our regular triads of one, three, five, into one, five, ten, or three up an octave. So let's take a look at all the diatonic triads within our F Lydian scale here. And now let's turn them all into open triads. As you can see, now we have wide intervals all over the place. When we descend, we will switch them all into a downwards motion by starting on their top notes first. This all will sound like this. <laughs> Unbelievable! Talk about knocking two birds with one stone. This is like a bird massacre. This has you working on theory, technique, range, evenness across all registers, and hearing a different way to work diatonic triads into your ears. If you can play all five of these exercises within a single scale, mastering them all into a point where you don't even have to think when you're playing them, then I am pretty confident that you will never struggle at recalling or playing that scale ever again.
All right, everybody, thanks for watching today's video. Remember, you can find all these scales in the book Scales for Jazz Improvisation, written by Chad Lefkowitz Brown. And you can use the code NG5 for $5 off. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments what else you'd like to see from us. Thank you again. I'll see you all next time.